Hello healers and health seekers, it's me, Ichoda, healing with medical medium information for four years now. And if you want to know what I'm healing from or what I have healed from, mast cell activation disorder, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, dysautonomia POTS, SIBO, PCOS, gastroparesis, hypothyroid, migraines, and a whole host of other symptoms and conditions if you want to know more. The description box below will the below the video will take you to many more videos about my healing journey and my process and what I feel. Today is time for <laughs> what's up Wednesday? <laughs> it's not Wednesday. Um, not when this is uploaded and not when it's being filmed, but that is the day where I update and talk about my healing journey and what's been going on with me and I'm gonna do that now. And so we'll just spell it W-H-E-N like we do sometimes. Okay. Uh, what's been going on with me lately? Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. This. What's up with your skin, Ichoda? Are you cutting yourself? What are you doing? Are you fighting with your cat? What's happening? Why do your arms look like that? Oh, this one's cleared up. Sorry. Why does your arm look like that? It's actually starting to, it's starting to finally fade. But so I don't know, a few weeks ago now, this happened where I was starting to, I think I might've even talked about it a couple videos ago, a couple of what's up Wednesdays ago, where I was starting to get these weird, just literally out of nowhere. It's not a bug bite. It's not a scratch. It's not a cut. I did not do anything. I didn't burn myself. I didn't do anything to my arms. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden appeared these marks and they just have been on my arms. And I was like, well, this is interesting. And one of them in the middle actually felt like underneath the skin, there was like a little thin, really super thin wire. But I still like, I have this, this appeared and it's kind of like a circle with like lines through it. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. At first I thought, oh, did I get a bite or something? And then, but cause the lines weren't there at first, but they just appeared. And I was like, what's going on? Now, I do know that heavy metals when coming out of the body can sometimes cause some discoloration of the skin. Uh, I've seen it happen before. I know it can happen. I don't think I've ever had it happen like this, but I immediately knew that that's what it was. I'm like, oh, it's, this is, must be heavy metals coming out. But I thought it was interesting about the lines. And I thought, especially this, this one, where it's like this weird patchy circle with like lines through it. I'm like, what? It's like patterns are appearing on my body. And that's particularly interesting because where the lines were, you think, oh, okay, well maybe it's where I wore bracelets or something. But this one, like what, what is that? It's just weird. It's random. So it looks like I have um, gotten into some kind of a fight or uh, I started cutting or something like that. I didn't, I, none of that is true. They just appeared. So I feel that's really interesting. And they finally are starting to fade because I was like, wow, these are really dark. Are they just going to stay? Like what's going on? But the one on this arm is gone, totally gone. I don't, when I'm looking at my arm, I, I actually can't remember where it was on my arm. So I'll just defer to the pictures. Uh, but you can see my arm now. There's nothing except for the little brown dots that were always there, which are also heavy metals. Um, but those were always there. And this one is, this one's finally starting to fade. So so that's an interesting, really interesting thing. No pain, no other symptoms associated with it. No itching, nothing like that. It's just dark marks. It's just one of those things. Heavy metals come out. I've also seen um, when heavy metals come out, like people get like dark stuff on their tongue, like even black stuff on their tongue. I have not had that happen, but I have seen it happen with friends. And that's like a weird one. I'm like, oh yeah, that's odd. But it. But the good news is heavy metal detox smoothie, celery juice. We're taking care of it. We're getting it all out of there. Oh, what else has been going on with me? 
Well, I made a whole video about this, so I won't talk too much about it, but because I've lost weight, I'm trying to get some new shorts because my pants won't stay up. My shorts won't stay up or my pants, but I'm only wearing shorts right now and trying to get new pants. That's the whole thing. It's a chemical S storm, a chemical poop storm, <laughs> trying to get new pants without chemical. Can a girl just get a pair of chemical free pants? That's all I want to know. That's all I want. The answer is no, no, she can't. So frustrating. I'm not frustrated with the weight loss. I'm frustrated with not having any clothes to fit what size I am now, whatever size that is. I'm gearing myself up to do another 369, another bunch of rounds of the 369, hopefully advanced. I might start with the original again and then go into the advanced as I feel inspired or whatever, because I do have such amazing results with that cleanse. And if you guys haven't read the cleanse to heal book, I know everybody watching this has read the cleanse to heal book, right? 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 Tell me in the comments below. I know you have, you have. Anyway, uh, gearing up to do some more rounds of the cleanse, but in the meanwhile, I have in between been eating totally salt free, totally fat free. I mean, I've been eating fat free for a long time now. And when I say a long time, I mean several months, but then even before that it was several months and then I had like a one month break and then whatever. But so I've been doing several months fat free I think it's been at least six months. I think it's been at least six months I've been fat free, fully fat free, I think. And there it was like another several months before that, but I did have that one month break. And it's been a couple of months that I've been fully salt free, maybe, I think a couple months. Ah, bad at time lately, I'm not sure how much time is best. And. I'm doing all right with it. I really am. Like I, I don't mind. I'm so impressed with myself because I've found ways to eat cooked foods. And it's not that I don't miss the salt because the salt does kick up the flavor and it just, it adds that salty goodness. And I, I don't hate it. Uh, <laughs> but just knowing that the salt pickles my liver and what it does and that it's standing in the way of me really fully cleaning out my lymph and releasing the rest of the stuff that needs to release out of my liver. I'm like, okay, I can do without it. I don't need it. I, I can live without it. And I have been, and I've even been able to eat cooked foods without salt. And I never thought I could do this because cooked foods were always so hard. Like raw food, I don't have any problems eating raw food without salt. There's so much flavor in all the raw food. But for some reason, when I get to cooked foods, but I have discovered that where I used to put salt, if I put sweet for my particular palate, I don't think this applies to everyone because my husband says no, but then he's not trying to be salt free either. So I feel like it's like, well, do you get a vote if you, <laughs> if you're not even actually trying to do this? But if I put sweet, if I put some maple syrup or some honey where I used to put salt, it actually, it's like, oh, okay, flavor. It's good. I don't know. And other spices too, obviously, but for some reason that does it for me. And dulse is a great salt substitute, but to me it's not quite the same and it, it dulse does add its own flavor to things. So it's not quite, it doesn't quite do the same thing. So I just been adding sweet to everything. And the beautiful thing is, is honey and maple syrup. Those are healing foods. So it's all good. It's like, it's all making my liver happy. Nobody's sad there. So yeah, haven't been eating salt. So I've mostly been, I've been eating a lot of raw stuff. Um, it's summer, so there's melons, which means I've been either blending or eating watermelon almost daily or some other melon. Cantaloupe has happened also. <laughs> I just, I love watermelon. That's my favorite, but I also really enjoy a good ripe cantaloupe. Oh my gosh, you put a little vanilla powder in it and you blend it up in the Vitamix and ooh, it is good. Or you can just eat it. A good ripe cantaloupe is all the flavor you need all by itself. Let's see, let's just go over a typical day. Uh, let's go over yesterday. Yesterday I had, obviously I start the day every day with 32 ounces of lemon water. I add honey to my lemon water, but only a little bit because ever since I did the 369 cleanse, I have really cut back on the amount of honey I use. 
And I don't know if I'm thrilled with it. I really love honey, <laughs> but in the cleanse, he just says to add like a teaspoon to your, to your lemon water. So I'm like, okay. So that's what I do at the most, like a two teaspoons. And then obviously half hour later, I will have 32 ounces of celery juice. And then a half hour after that, sometimes I will have the blended melon or just eat melon or whatever. And then after that, I will have my heavy metal detox smoothie. I don't necessarily always wait a half an hour between watermelon and smoothie. Sometimes I'll just have it straight after. And lunch varies. Sometimes it's a smoothie. Sometimes it's a salad with steamed potatoes. Sometimes it's potato nachos. Well, what I do is I take like a layer of potato rounds that I baked in the oven and then I'll layer it with a bunch of lettuce that I picked from my very own garden and grew my very own self. So it's the most delicious lettuce in the world. And it grew just for me and I love it. It makes me so happy and I picking it makes me so happy and it's beautiful. Anyway, so I'll do a layer of lettuce. I'm trying to just find everything to put lettuce in and on and eat because I just am so delighted with it. And uh, then I'll do a layer of medical medium fat-free nacho cheese sauce because I'm eating fat-free. And then I will do a layer of a salsa with, and I did a blended salsa, but I think I prefer it. I did it because somebody else suggested it and I was like, oh, let's try that. And then I just do the onions separate, like little chunky onions. But I'm not a big fan of the blended salsa. I like a nice raw, chunky raw salsa. So just, I would say do a layer of nice raw salsa on top of that because it's nummier that way to me. And I love, I've had that the last couple nights for, actually it was for dinner. <laughs> I've had that the last couple nights for dinner. My lunch and dinner sort of blend together. It's weird. I don't know how to explain that, but I, by the time I've had my, Basically my heavy metal detox smoothie is my lunch and then I'll have like a snack and then I'll have dinner. So I'll have like a smoothie after that and then, and then that's my dinner is the steamed potatoes. And occasionally I'll have a smoothie even after that or like applesauce or something, some kind of snack. But most of the time that's kind of the last meal I have of the day. And then I'll have, I am growing lemon balm and I will pick some lemon balm and have some delicious lemon balm tea. There is nothing quite like tea steeped from fresh lemon balm leaves. I actually love lemon balm tea from dried lemon balm. I, I loved it the whole time ever I've, since I've ever first tried it, but fresh, it's just, it's like so light and sweet and like just a hint of like this lemony. It's so good. It's so good. And you put hurrah honey in it. Oh, forget about it. It is so good. I highly recommend it. You should try it. Grow your own lemon balm, get some fresh lemon balm, whatever you gotta do. Get some fresh, fresh lemon balm from your farmer's market because it's all growing right now. Whatever, however you gotta get it and try it in a tea, it is divine. It's so good. So I'm trying to remember to have that. Oh, and you know what I did? I took the lemon balm because it's all sunny and hot out every single day and I made sun tea. So you just put the lemon balm in the jar with filtered water and you stick it outside for the whole day and then you take it inside in the evening when it's time to have your tea and it's warm because it's been sitting in the sun all day. It's already warm. And then you just add your raw honey to it. Ah, uh, it's so good. Mm, do it, do it. And then when you do it, come back to this video and make a comment in the comment and say, I did it and I tried it and you were so right because oh my gosh, it's the best thing I've ever tasted. It's so good. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a lofty claim, isn't it? I don't know if it's the best thing you've ever tasted, but it's amazing. It's so delicious. I wonder if I can make honeysuckle tea. I'm looking at all this honeysuckle outside my window and I'm like, hmm, of course it's way high up in the tree. I can't possibly reach that, but I think there's some low to the ground as well. The honeysuckle grew so high and so tall. It's a tree. It's its own beautiful tree. It's gorgeous. Anyway, 
Okay, so that's what I've been eating lately. <laughs> and I did talk about, in my other video, I talked about symptoms that I've had re kind of flaring up a little bit lately, and they are my shingles symptoms. <sighs> and the reason they've been flaring is because Ichoda forgot to take her supplements for like a month, so, or two. I don't even, again, I don't, what's time? I don't know. Um, I forgot to take my supplements for a long enough period that my body was like, hey, aren't we forgetting something? Ow, this hurts. So, and what that looks like, just to recap, is I get a little bursitis in my hips and I get a little bit of itchy in my back and I get a little bit of lower back soreness and a little bit of tightness in my shoulders and neck. And those are my shingle symptoms. Now, the good news is, is they're super subtle and uh, compared to, like I used to live 24 seven and just excruciating pain from those things. And I mean, my lower back was like, I, my sacral spots on my lower back were just fire. It was just like two, my visualization of it is I just had two lumps of hot coal in my back all the time and it hurt so much. And then just the pain would just radiate out from those two spots. And there was always tightness in my shoulders and neck and the bursitis in my hips that came along. And at some point I got knee pain too, but that actually went away super quick when I started the medical medium information. It was like the last to show up. So it was the first to get axed, I guess. It wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. And it, it's, I've never seen hide nor hair of that again. That's gone. And uh, what did they tell me at the doctor? Because I did tell the doctor about it. What did she say it was? Did she say I have arthritis in my knees? I think she did. I think that's what she said it was. I don't even remember because it was such a, I had so many other symptoms and conditions that were so much worse than the knee pain that I, it was like a blip on the radar. I barely registered. I was like, oh, pain in my knees, whatever. And she's like, oh, arthritis. I think that's what happened. So yeah, that's never come back. But so just like some mild mm, soreness or whatever. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, why have I been having soreness in my body? And then I, yeah, I realized like, oh, I haven't taken any of the supplements that I usually take that have been really helping my shingles, obviously. <laughs> so I restarted those and already, I'm not even kidding, it's like been three days and already the pain has started to go back down. So take your supplements, kids. There's a reason for it. Sometimes, okay, like I said, I've been doing this for four years. I have changed around my supplements a bit here and there. Um, Cause I think for the first like two years, I was not focused at all on shingles. I was like, I was like EBV and strep, that's it. And then, I got my EBV down around 18 months and then I was like full force on the strep. I was still using the CPAP machine and I feel like, I honestly believe that that CPAP machine was just keeping the strep going. Like it was just like, let's just keep this party going. So I think that's why it has taken me so much longer to heal the strep than, <sighs> than anything else. <laughs> and then after, so once I started kind of I didn't have to focus as much on the EBV. I was focusing a little more on shingles. And if you're kind of new to this party and new to the medical medium information is what I mean. And you don't know what I'm talking about. Like what, like, Oh my gosh, there are three different protocols or whatever. Not really. It's, it's really, there's so much crossover that if you do a sort of like set of basic supplements and basic, you know, healing foods, you're, you're going to kind of take care of all three of them but you can get a little more targeted with specific supplements that are kind of really go at those ones harder. And with shingles, um, ALA is one of them. Lobelia is another one. I haven't taken Lobelia in a while, but ALA really helps the shingles. It really helps take it down for me. So I might go add some Lobelia back in, but I, I take a lot of tinctures and a lot of supplements. So you know, L-lysine takes care of kind of all of them. Vitamin C, all of them. Cat's claw, all of them. Lemon balm, 
oh, just take it. It's so good for everything, <laughs> like everything. Licorice, yeah, all of that. I mean, just kind of most of them do all of them. So it's the ALA that's kind of more shingles target. And then for strep, my target one is kind of um, like golden seal, sovereign silver, and licorice are kind of what I think of as my strep team, my strep fighters. Anyway, there's there's other ones too. You can read the information yourself about strep and stuff like that. So I, I, I kind of went heavier on like thinking about those and I forgot why I started talking about that. So I kind of don't know how to trail off and end this segment of my discussion. <laughs> Anyway, my point being, uh, oh, I, I think I think I was kind of going to say that what happens is, you know, I've been doing this for four years, and so I've been taking the supplements, and I have changed them around a couple times uh, at different periods in my healing journey, and sometimes you're just like, well, do I really, I feel good, you know, things are doing well, do I really need to keep taking these? And the answer is yes, yes, you do. <laughs> At least for me, because when I trailed off of taking them, because I had started to do the cleanse and then I just sort of didn't get back in the habit of taking them again. So when I stopped taking them, it's like, oh yeah, no, that it comes back. It comes back a little bit. So I don't think it would come back full force because I am doing all the healing food. So I, I, I don't think that would happen, but you know, a little bit. And it's like, yeah, I'd rather just have that all gone again. I don't really want to have that. So back to the supplements I go. And I guess sometimes it's kind of good to have that reminder like, oh yeah, this is why I do this. It It is important. It's not, you know, I'm not just spinning my wheels. Like this really is important. Not that I ever think I'm spinning my wheels, but sometimes, you know, you just think, eh, I'm good. Do I have to keep doing this? I don't need to keep doing this. I need to keep doing this. It's just like celery juice. I just, I get up and I drink my, it's like I get up every morning, I drink my lemon water, I drink my celery juice. I don't ever question it. So I don't know why there's other parts that I'm like, do I have to do this part? <laughs> of course, supplements cost a lot more than celery. So maybe that's why a little bit sometimes I'd be like, could I save money by not doing this? Well, I could, but then I'd feel it. All right find other places to save money. Okay, so what else is going on in my life? I mean, mostly like everything has just revolved around my plants. And when it's not revolving around my plants, it's revolving around the food I'm making for myself and my family. And also we have been Mostly my husband's been doing this, but hey, remember the RV? If you have been watching my videos for a long time, you know that we lived in our RV for like a year, twice. And the second time it was uh, unanticipated. The first time it was totally on purpose and we had a great time we traveled. The second time it was supposed to be a very temporary situation while we looked for a house and found a house and then we were going to move into a house and then it was all going to be good and it was going to take maximum of three months. Uh, it's a year later than, well, no, we ended up living in the RV for about eight or nine months. And then now we have been in uh, my in-laws house for about six months. It's more than a year later and we still haven't found a house. Obviously the big, you know, lockdown situation changed a lot of things uh, and really put a damper on the housing market. That damper seems to still be there and I am chemically sensitive and it makes us have an extra level of, it's an extra level of impediment to us finding a house that we can live in because we A, have a visualization of like what we want in a house. We do, we have specific standards and what we're looking for and a certain kind of layout slash floor plan that we want and certain kinds of yard space and whatever, like there's, we have our, what we're looking for. Then add to that, it cannot be a house in which people used plug and air fresheners, scented candles, 
They cannot have fresh surfaces like fresh paint or flooring because all that stuff off gases and it makes me sick real quickly. Uh, honestly, it's not really safe for anyone to live in, but my body tells me immediately that I can't be in it. Like immediately, like, nope. And obviously it can't have mold. I'll react to that as well. So there's a lot of obstacles for us. <laughs> And I just keep thinking, you know, the universe is going to bring us our perfect house. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in time. And I'm not, I get a bit tired, I get a bit tired of waiting, but you know, I'm trying not to get, I'm trying to just keep a light heart and just trust. Right. So that's the backstory. Uh, so what's been going on is we're going to sell the RV and we lived in it so some things need to be like my husband's trying to get it cleaned and it's not on site it's at a location where we're storing it so he has to go to that location there is no running water nothing hooked up to it so he has to take all the supplies he needs to go and he does this after work and he's been doing it after work like i think he did it like three days this week he went and has gone to the rv done some cleaning. He's going to do some touching up of the paint. We discovered like the, the air conditioning units on the roof. There's two of them. Well, both of the covers got cracked somehow. We have a cover over the RV, but I don't know if over winter, if it hailed or the snow was too heavy or what happened or if it got too cold. I don't know. Maybe it was the cold. Maybe the cold cracked it. I don't know. But the, so, we don't even know what kind of air conditioners we have and trying to find covers for these things has been really frustrating my husband this week because he's trying to figure it out and anyway so a lot of our energy has been focused there in a couple of weeks he's going to drive to wisconsin and get all of our stuff out of storage and bring it back here and we're trying to make space in this house to somehow like fit all of our stuff that we now have in storage so that we don't have to still pay to store it and also so it can be here so that we can use the stuff we want to use so it's been a little bit busy so that's what my attention has been on is all kind of getting all that stuff you know i mean i don't help with a lot of it but there are certain aspects that I do help with. Like the stuff that's here, I help with. Um, he's doing all the RV stuff himself. We have to, we have to like reupholster the seats or replace the furniture or something because it's like torn and because A, I want to keep it chemical free. Like when I sell the RV, I, my, I want one of the selling points to be like we made this a safe space for somebody who has multiple chemical sensitivity and or mold illness because that's a big crossover. And so that, you know, hopefully we can sell it to somebody that wants that same thing. But there's a couple of things like I don't want to buy brand new off-gassing furniture and put it in there <laughs> and then be like, it's totally fine, chemical free, you know. No, it won't be. So I'm like, maybe I can get it reupholstered because that'll be not so stinky. Anyway, that's just uh, really an aside. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I'm done. If you like this video, <laughs> please give a thumbs up below. You can subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button and ding the bell next to it if you want to be notified when I post new videos. I recommend it. I have an irregular upload schedule. I love you, my healers and health seekers. I so appreciate your presence. I really appreciate you being on this healing journey with me. I love your comments and I love your beautiful, heroic warrior energy because we all know that surviving chronic illness and trying to heal from chronic illness is both of those things separately and in of themselves are acts of heroism i'm serious like herculean herculean effort to to live through a chronic illness man so my heart is with you and i love you and you can heal Stay curious, my healers and health seekers. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.